before the pandemic, state courts in the United States decided about 85 million cases a year. About 3 million people a day come through state courthouses across the country. Um, we don't have solid numbers on this, but again, before the pandemic, we think we were trying about 100,000 jury trials a year. So it's, um, it's where 98, 99% of the nation's uh, court work is done. Uh, and of course, the pandemic hit us like a load of bricks. Um, many places like New York State um, had to just close the courthouses uh, and uh, not accept filings. They don't have electronic filing throughout New York. Uh, Texas does. Um, so we didn't cl close completely down, uh, but uh, we se severely curtailed operations. And th those are two states out of 50, and uh, we all suffered the same thing. Uh, and throughout all of this, um, we have uh, marshaled the troops just immediately uh, to try to uh, bring resources uh, to all of these courts so that they could function and not have to reinvent um, the wheel. The National Center's website um, has all things pandemic on it, emergency orders, how to handle cases, teleconferencing. Um, the Conference of Chief Justices in Casca formed a rapid response team just a few days into the pandemic uh, with um, six, three chiefs and three COSCA members. Um, it's me and uh, Chief Judge Fiore, uh, Fiore in New York and Chief Judge Barbera in Maryland and court administrators from Rhode Island, Texas, and Nebraska. Uh, you've heard of the digital divide, no doubt. Um, and we're working with uh, internet providers uh, to try to make sure that there are easy ways uh, for people who do not have uh, ready and unlimited access to Wi-Fi or broadband or other uh, digital interfaces um, to get that um, and making some real progress on that. And at the same time, we're trying to make sure that there's transparency in the courts and people can see what's going on, recording proceedings, offering uh, the public access to them, uh, just as there can be public access to this meeting. Uh, is this the new normal? Probably working uh, for appellate courts that's easy for trial courts it's a lot harder for the profession it, it's back and forth some some law firms are finding it easier than others uh, and uh, we'll have to see but it has um, shocked a, a profession a justice system that I think it's fair to say abhors change in whatever form it comes uh, to looking at ways that we can um, enter the third decade of the 21st century, uh, more prepared to uh, make justice more accessible. Our dockets, uh, who knows? Uh, we're wor very worried. Um, eviction dockets uh, have not um, uh, grown too much um, because of the CARES Act stays and other federal stays, but those are expiring and so uh, we're trying to prepare for those um, in Texas. Uh, we're looking at local solutions rather than, we had a statewide moratorium to start with, but now we're trying to look at more local solutions because it's different, different places. Uh, it hits um, communities differently in Lubbock than it does in Houston. So um, other states are doing different things. We know debt collection. Uh, is right behind it. In, in before the pandemic, last fiscal year, Texas debt collection cases grew 40%, which is an unbelievable number. Um, so uh, no doubt that will pick up uh, again. Um, and what will be the backlog? Again, Texas has n numbers. Um, in April and May, the Texas trial courts um, cleared their dockets. Uh, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is that filings were down um, uh, 50 to 60 percent. So we know that can't last. Uh, and what will we do when in, uh, the backlog, uh, we're calling it a tsunami, uh, hits us and we're trying to uh, prepare for that. Um, the one thing we don't know what to do about are, are, is jury trials. Um, we've tried and tried and tried. Uh, we've had three uh, real jury trials in Texas 
in uh, short criminal cases um, that went off without a hitch. Uh, but the preparations, uh, the time, the money that's involved in trying to get ready to keep everybody safe is really uh, enormous. Um, there have been two uh, federal um, trials in uh, federal court trials in Texas. Again, the, the days and days and days of preparation, uh, the staff spending full time on trying to bring it, uh, bring it about. Uh, my prediction is that we won't be able to resume jury trials uh, on any kind of basis like we have been having them until um, there is a vaccine or at least a uh, dependable, quick uh, test that can be administered at the door of the courthouse to know that people that are coming in are safe. Uh, long term, we're worried about budget impacts um, on the courts. It doesn't look too bad uh, in Texas, but other states uh, have already sounded the alarm uh, that um, <coughs> court funding may be cut. Uh, again, um, on legal aid uh, funding, uh, so far we've done pretty well in the Congress. They've been very responsive to the um, argument that the, this is not a time to cut. This is a time when it's really needed. And actually we need to ramp up um, and uh, so far we're getting a good response uh, from them. The courts know that uh, whatever, however people approach these issues, one thing that has to be done in the end is the courts have got to assure the public that they can have trust and confidence in court decisions and judges in the justice system uh, and across the board. And the courts are very busy uh, trying to um, improve cybersecurity. Uh, we had a ransomware attack on the appellate courts in Texas on May 8th. Uh, we were all backed up. Uh, our systems were all uh, set up to recover from that. It took three or four weeks to do it uh, and it cost some money. Um, but nevertheless, we got it all back. Um, and it's just a reminder uh, that uh, clicking on a link uh, or responding to an inquiry about uh, email passwords uh, can really do an organization uh, uh, very, uh, uh, a great deal of damage. But as I said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the level is uh, huge, it's very high. Uh, we have talked about it. The National Center is working on the gathering the responses from the states. Um, in Texas, we had a statewide moratorium until May 18th. Um, and then uh, we lifted that, but we encouraged the uh, uh, courts that handle those cases. In Texas, they're justices of the peace. Uh, so we encouraged the JPs um, to impose their own moratoria if, the, if their community uh, needed it. That's what they've done in Houston and Dallas, uh, San Antonio, um, the, in places that have not been so hard hit, like Midland. Um, the, uh, they've gone forward to some extent, but the locales are trying to uh, adjust. Um, and that's pretty, across the country, uh, I think, Almost every state had a statewide moratorium. Um, some of those, uh, most of them are lifted or being lifted, and I think they'll all approach it uh, the same way. Then uh, some locations are, are trying to do uh, eviction diversion programs, uh, trying to uh, get uh, point uh, tenants to places where they can get counsel and help, uh, but we're very concerned uh, not just from the court point of view, because uh, I think the courts can handle the cases, it's just from the societal point of view, is what's this gonna do to us? Actually, after the uh, Ebola case in Maine back in 2014, the National Center began uh, putting together um, response uh, kinds of programs to help courts think about what they needed. Not, not just co-op programs, what, you know, what to do in emergency, everybody's supposed to have one of those. 
um, but programs on uh, how to respond to those kind of situations. And what we learned um, is um, think about what the needs are going to be, whatever the kind of disaster it is, uh, and then try to think about what you're going to do about uh, those needs. And so they're a little different. Like when Harvey hit uh, Texas, the, it just put Houston underwater. So you just couldn't move in Houston. Um, now with the pandemic, you can move, you just got to get sick if you're not careful. Uh, so, so yes, we're trying to uh, develop best practices so uh, we can, so we won't be always in a responsive uh, mode. Everybody thinks that there's going to be a crush of evictions. Now, um, you know, maybe it won't be quite as, as bad as we fear, but it's, it's going to be severe. And there's no, I just don't think there's much question about that. On the criminal side, um, we, you know, we're not having any jury trials. And um, criminal defense lawyers, uh, already uh, very vocal and thoughtful about uh, how you're going to get a representative jury uh, in an environment like this. We've, we've done polling across the United States. Lots of states have done their own polling. We've done polling in Texas. Um, and people say, I don't care. I'm not showing up if there's a pandemic. Uh, so I think the evictions, debt collection, um, criminal cases, uh, and, and uh, uh, those are probably the big, the big three that we're worried about.